We're looking at my lift. Unfortunately, it's got a major flaw in it and it is uh, tried to kill me. So we have to do some repair to it. Check out the video. With that post moving, this one post moving, going that direction, that means that these bolts holding down this post are not strong enough. Now, I gotta tell you, I had a gut feeling that four inches was not enough. I didn't trust my gut. I followed the instructions of the manufacturer. I called the manufacturer to double check things to make sure everything's done. I torqued it down the way it should have been and it still failed on me. Here's the deal. I should have known that I should have trusted that my gut says at least six inches of embedment for these bolts and I didn't get that. So I'm gonna have to tear these things out and it's gonna suck. But you guys are gonna follow along with the adventure and see how I do it. Hopefully it's not gonna take me too long. I've been thinking about it. I've been him hawing over it. It's been going on for a while now. Actually, I kind of knew it the day I lifted the truck up for the first time. All right, so the plan is, I'm gonna take these posts out, move them, create a huge hole, put a new foundation footer in there, pour that in there. We need to let it cure, put those posts back, bolt them back down with the proper embedment. I need four inches of embedment into six inches of concrete. I didn't have that earlier. I, my gut told me I should have done that, but I didn't. I followed the manufacturer's instructions and they were wrong because these posts should not move at all with the truck I'm putting on there. All right, so once that's done, I'll be able to put everything back together and we're gonna get going with some other projects. Unfortunately, that's been stalling me. Follow along, I'm gonna show you how I wanna do it. It's gonna suck, but I'm gonna get it done. tool stuff I'm gonna need for this project. I'm not happy about it, but hey, we got the gas saw. That's gonna cut up some serious concrete. I got the mixer to help me out with the concrete when I put it back in. And this one's gonna suck to use. I hate, I hate it. It's gonna, but you know what? Jackhammer is the only way to go. So, got all this complimentary of the rental tool blending library at your local Habitat Humanity. I can't say enough for them. They've been awesome to me in my home remodel as well as helping me rebuild this garage. So if you haven't used them before, go check out your Habitat Humanity Restore store. Great things on sale there, as well as you can use a lending library to get things like this. Alrighty, let's get at it. All right, let's see how this goes. If it doesn't go well, the corner will know exactly what happened. Thirty. 
Should be by 24. 24. That should work. Alright, this is going to be the beast of the hour. Hopefully it makes quick work of that concrete. Makes my life a little easier. It's uh, still, it's brand new. I got it rented. And the cool part is it's two cycle. It got some water automatically there. So it's automatic flow. So we can just go ahead and plug our hose in there, which we have in the garage. We'll make that go, make hopefully quick work on this concrete. We'll see how it goes. freshly washed lawnmower and motorcycle. I guess I'll have to wash those down. We'll get this squeegeed out, washed out, start jacking out some concrete. Concrete's cut. Now we're gonna get to the jackhammering. Ooh, not gonna be fun. a perfect example of rebar not being properly placed inside the concrete. It should be in the middle of the concrete, not at the bottom of the concrete, like up against the sand where it's shown. Overall, it looks like they did a good job of getting through all the, I did a good job of getting the concrete 
cup gets all the way through. So that's a good thing. Not too bad. I've never done this before. So if you've never done something before, ask questions, do some research, and give it a try. Worst thing you do is fail and try it again. Concrete didn't go by the, below the rebar. That's part of the problem over here. That's why it failed. See, there's no embedment in the concrete or the rebar in the concrete. these anchor bolts in they were embedded four inches and the blue line right here or black line probably in the video looks like black but that's four inches as you can see it was all embedded and it broke off right here but as you can see this moved up and I measured that that's seven eighths of an inch so those anchors failed and that was on the right hand side looking at it from the front of the truck so that's the one that leaned in the most this was actually on the back side as, as indicated by the caulking against the wall that tells me why this failed because the anchor is not being embedded correctly okay these concrete anchors work just like the anchors you put on your wall to hang up a picture it goes inside the concrete and as, as bolt expands as you tighten it down or torque it is by this picture you can see it's torqued and provides an expansion in there and holds that anchor into the concrete. Now if you look at these expansion anchors that I pulled out of the concrete, they did not expand. They gave me what was called a false torque reading. And I believe that false torque reading was caused by the epoxy that I used at the manufacturer's recommendation inside the holes in conjunction with these bolts. I won't do that again. Alrighty, I think that's the cause of our failure and why these bolts pulled out of the concrete. Let's get back at it. All right, here we go. All right, these holes are right around seven inches deep for the pad. I got my rebar in there, and you're wondering why it's not tied to the top. Well, we want that rebar to be more in the middle of the pad. That's why it's drooped down a little bit, so it's gonna be right going through the middle of the pad. And it's gonna tie in between the two, so we're good to go there. Same thing over here. There's a little bit of a uh, droop over there. Uh, the pad wasn't concrete for the garage floor. It was not exactly sitting on the sand. I had to pack sand underneath all these corners here. So the rebar is sitting down there in the middle. I'm using zip ties to kind of hold it up. So when I pour the concrete, it kind of sits in the middle. It adds a little bit of strength there. So there we at, ready to go. I'm done for the night. We're gonna pour it in the morning. Alrighty, good morning. I got my tea. It was a rough night, working hard. Um, I'm getting older, so I'm not used to working that hard, physically at least. So, got a little rest today. We're gonna hit it hard today. We're gonna clean up around here, mark out where the rebar is so we don't hit it when we go to put the uh, bolts in to bolt down the lifts in a week or so. And then we're gonna start pouring some concrete. Hopefully we get that done quickly. I can get all the re rental oil equipment returned early in the day and I can relax this afternoon as I gotta go back to work for about six days tomorrow. So I like to relax a little bit. I wanna edit some videos and then get them out to you guys. Josh has been wondering where I'm at, so I gotta get him happy as well. So talk to you guys later, we're gonna get going.
got the concrete in. We got it a little bit leveled off here. Now we've got to let it dry. We'll come back in about a couple hours when that water starts to wick off and dry. We'll start leveling it off. Nice thing about it, I pour it a little wet, so it's going to kind of self-level. And you can kind of see that over here. If you guys watched the previous episodes on this lift, I had to grind down the concrete. So what's happening over here is it's self-leveling. So there's going to be a little bit of a bump over there in the corner. And it's going to be self-leveled across here. So that'll make my life a lot easier when I'm going to put this lift back in. It'll be a nice level surface. We'll let this dry. We're going to go to lunch. And we'll come back and uh, skim it out and clean it up as we go. All right, right now we got about everything cleaned up and we're just gonna go to grab some lunch. Additionally, we're gonna go return the mixer, the jackhammer and the saw and the shovel, as well as we're gonna go drop off this concrete that we didn't use. I overestimated how much we needed by seven bags. That's good, I wasn't seven bags short. Check you back after lunch. Alrighty, coming out and checking on the pads. It's been about, let's see here, eight hours since I poured these and they're setting up nicely. I uh, did one last coat of them or just kind of skimmed them out there, make them nice and level, make sure they're perfect. When they're drying the way I want them to dry, they look good. Uh, there's a little bit of lip here and everybody's probably wondering what that lip is for. Well, what that happens is, is there's a slope from that back wall to right here. So if you look right here, it's level there. Well, I poured this concrete fairly wet and it self leveled a little bit. I had to double check over the level, but it looks pretty good uh, level from this side, this side, and this side, this side. And unlike when I originally did it, I don't have to grind down. So now when these things cure, I can just put these posts back down. Now, here's the unfortunate part. I have to wait 28 days before I can drill into these and bolt these posts down. So I will let these sit. I have a work trip. I'm gonna let these sit for about six days on my work trip. When I come back, I can move these pads over here. It'll be cured concrete. And then we'll just let them sit there for 28 days. And when the 28 days is up, I'll bolt them back down. The nice part is it shouldn't take too long to get them in place, all I have to do is figure out where the holes need to be drilled, pull the posts out, drill the holes, put the posts back in, and then mount them down. The electricals are there, as you saw. Hydraulic, I didn't disconnect the hydraulic, so I saved myself some time there. We'll just have to re-tension that cable there, and then we'll just clean it up, and the posts will be done, and we'll have our lift back and work in order. I want to put a special thanks out to the viewer that noticed that these posts were moving. I did not see it when I first started using these lifts. And tell you what, these lifts could have killed me if I wasn't careful. You know who you are. I appreciate it. I sent you a private message. All right, Honey Badger here. At the end of the day, it's been a few hours. I've actually gone inside, taken a shower, relaxed, chilled a little bit, but I had to come out and check on these pads. I showed you what I found. So now we get to wait. 28 days later, what we're gonna do is bolt those suckers down and get that lift back working. Unfortunately, it's a 28 day wait. That's the way it works with concrete. It gets harder per day, but I have to wait 28 days to bolt it down. That's all I got for today. If you like what you see, hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. If you're liking what you see and you think somebody else will like it, please share with them. Ask them to subscribe so I can grow this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the notification button. So it'll be 28 days approximately, maybe 30, a little bit longer than that for me to get the video out, but around there, so you get a notification when this comes out. In the meantime, I'm gonna put out a lot of other content. Josh is gonna be working his little tail off when I finally get him some videos. I've been kind of slacking. I've been working ahead on the house. I've been working ahead on some other stuff, but you'll see some videos about that, but we're gonna get some videos out. Also, look at this Instagram channel. I'm gonna send out some notifications there, but more importantly, thanks for watching. Work safe, mechanic safe. Talk to you guys later.